Hey, this is Sky. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Let's talk about success. Success in life, whether it be success in business, success in relationships, I mean, it's all the same. You may have different goal posts or markers of what you say, okay, there we go, that's it, but it's all pretty much the same. When you become successful in one area, you don't always, but you have potential to become successful in other areas. Strength builds strength, just like money builds money. You gotta have money to make money. I heard a quote the other day that I liked. I wrote it down and said, if you succeed properly, your success helps everyone. Now I'll read it again. If you succeed properly, your success helps everyone. That's a good idea of what success is. How do you mark success? Is, is success the fancy car that you uh, purchased? Or is it your house? Is it the college, that, the elite college that you sent your son to? Is that success? We can mark success in all kinds of ways. I'm not down on financial success. But I think that it's important to remember what our goals are. Say, for example, with business. When I started my motorcycle shop, Sinister City Motorcycles, out in Los Angeles, back in 2000, 2001, I guess it was. We had a mission. Our mission, our particular niche, that's what your mission is, really. was to serve the younger generation, the next generation of bikers, was to offer custom motorcycles, like what you saw on TV, but affordable versions, rat bikes, and you know stuff that would be a little bit more Mad Max style, less pretty boy shit. We didn't care about making bikes for Motley Crue or motherfuckers like that. We want to make bikes for working class people because that's who rides motorcycles. At least that's what all, my opinion of being a biker was always about. It wasn't these uh, rubs, that's what we call them, rich urban bikers. It was about working class. But whatever. That was my mission, was to have affordable motorcycles for the next generation. That's what I wanted to do. Added along with that was the idea that I felt like I'm a cool guy and I could help other people to be cool, be an avenue for people who want to be cool. And in my generation and younger generations, but Generation X, being cool was important. I don't know anybody in my generation that wanted to be a nerd or a loser. Everybody tried to be cool in some way or another. And there's all kinds of little genres and styles and fashions and fads and things that my generation had went through and we can all remember and kind of relate on those things. And I wanted to offer something for those people that may have felt left out of the biker scene. So in my mind, what that was really, if you get down to it, not just selling bikes, I'm not just selling clothing. I'm helping people. So think about it any way that you want, but, say, but with business, ideally, it's not just to make money. It's not self-serving. It's helping people. That's the mission. That's the goal. That's what you're engaged in every single day is helping people. Making money is the reward for helping people. It's, it's a byproduct. If you're really good at helping motherfuckers, then you get a lot of money. I mean, that's in a meritocracy. That's, that's the way I looked at it. But I also look at success as the way your success helps everyone. Staying with the business model with my motorcycle shop, I would always network with other motorcycle shops because I realized that there was a flow of money and all I needed to do was tap into it. I didn't need to create money. I didn't need to pull it out of my ass or pull it off of a tree. Or, I needed to tap into the existing flow of money that's already out there. There's customers out there. There's people spending out there. I see money changing hands. I got to figure out how to tap into that. I used to think the same way when I was in the streets. 
I had always made solid connections with motorcycle shops. And when I first moved to Florida here in 2004, two, late 2003, whenever it was to uh, set up my motorcycle shop here, the first thing I did was to crash all the other shops in this area. Me and my brother just would smash down the door. Here we are, Sky and Jason from California. So who the fuck are you? You know, and we would make friends with everybody that we could motorcycle shop business to business because if I can't do it maybe you can I would send work to other shops all week long not all day long I'm trying to make money but if I if I get a job or something that I can't do that's beyond my uh, knowledge level I I don't try to go on YouTube and, and learn about it so I can get that money money from that customer. The customer doesn't want to be my guinea pig so I can, I can learn on their time. That's not right. I send them to somebody and I never send somebody out of the door uh, without a reference. Oh, sorry. I don't know where you're going to get that done. At the very least, if I didn't have a, a, a connection off the top of my head, I'd take that motherfucker's number and tell him, I'll, I'll give you a call in a couple days if I find somebody. And I would think about, I'm trying to help you. It's good business, but it also helps other businesses. I've had other shops come up to me and be like, man, you've been sending me stuff regularly. What can I do for you? You send me stuff that, that, that you don't do. You got your niche, you got the stuff that you're good at, this is what I'm good at. If anything comes along, you need some handlebars bent, you need some tubing bent, you need something fabricated, you need some piece of shit Honda CB750 chopper from the 70s worked on, send those motherfucking little cheap ass bikes to me. You can play Jesse James, go and pretend to be big shots, send me the cheap stuff, we'll work back and forth, this worked beautifully. So if you're succeeding properly, your success helps everyone. There was a community of motorcycle shops throughout the country and we all kind of knew each other. It was like a secret squirrel society. And if I didn't know you, I knew of you and vice versa. And I would go to functions and whether it be from Miami to Maine, Washington to San Diego, you could, I could be like, hey, I'm Sky from Sinister. And people may be, oh yeah, I've heard of you. Or they could introduce themselves. And I'd be like, yeah, I've seen you. I've heard your stuff, on, you know, seen your stuff on TV or seen you in the magazines. We were all aware of each other and networking with each other and trying to do business. I was doing business with Ass Kicker in Arizona, doing business with builders all over the country. This is how it used to be. And then at a certain t uh, point, I can't really remember what exact year, but let's say it was around 10 years ago, 2010, 2012, somewhere in that neighborhood, shops started getting real stingy. And, and when shops started getting more stingy, maybe it was because the economy was flailing, the motorcycle industry started to take a dive, people's disposable income got taken away, so it changed the recipe. A lot of motherfuckers had got hit by the new legislation where you uh, had to have, if you're building one-off customs, you actually had to uh, become a manufacturer. Makes it a lot more difficult. Getting a manufacturer's license is like a million fucking dollars. So people stopped sending jobs to other people. They got stingier. The quality of work in each shop goes down because people were no longer specializing. They were doing everything. And the uh, ideas of let's truly help the customer went out the window to let me truly help myself. I get what it's, I was in the streets. I used to rob people. I know what it's like to need money and to survive and to hustle. I know what that's like, but we can't forget the mission and my mission sure it had some nuances to it of cheap bikes and of generational uh, uh, things with the industry but ultimately it was really just helping motherfuckers that was my mission if you boil it down to the the, the base ingredient it was just helping people you can't forget that 
And when you stop helping people, shops would, uh, I noticed it, I would go to their shop and see a project that should be in my shop. Now, I mean, it's their business, you do whatever you want, but this would have been a project that you would have sent to me. All of a sudden, that CB750, 1971, inline four chopper that everybody used to send me, I built a million of those fucking bikes. Uh, that was my, one of my niches. All of a sudden, that's sitting in their shop, and they're a Harley shop. A Harley only shop, a shop that has fuck Honda, they're going to the burning of the bike where they take a Honda and they burn it, uh, and he's got one of these things, and oh, but he needs money, oh, sorry, man, you know, uh, 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 they always have these stuttering excuses. Hey, I see how you motherfuckers are playing, but when we stop helping each other, when we stop playing this game of uh, working as one, and we become islands unto ourselves, the whole system breaks down. Everything I'm talking about right now can be related to society, it can be related to your relationship and your family structure, it can be related to a lot of different areas. And I'll just end right here, I'll have to read this quote again because I've been vibing on it all day. If you succeed properly, your success helps everyone. Thanks for watching.